So uh, I am going to give you a few examples today uh, of positions where one, actually I'm involved in all of these games. Okay. Some some positively and some negatively, um, and I'm going to kind of give you uh, the prompt of developing an attack. Okay. So in this first one, you can flip it so that you're looking at it from White's perspective. Oh yeah, already there. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna jump ahead to move 13, like around here. Okay. After like castles, takes, takes, takes. So your first like instinct, ten, five seconds of looking at this position, uh, what's going on? Who's better and by how much? Um. Well, materially is tied, but I guess white has both of their rooks available, whereas you've taken an extra bishop. I, As white, I hate that like my knight is pinned right here, because if I could move that, I could, uh, I could double up with some power in the F file, mm -hmm. uh, which seems like a decent way to get some attacking going. I mean, I would say, it, to me, it looks like white has an advantage right now. To some extent, it at least in the midterm, just because of the... They're more developed, but uh, I mean, obviously, black has like complete control of the center. So th I guess that's my evaluation. Yeah. So so if we take like the four, just try to follow like the the formula. The first thing you said, material equal cool king safety. Uh, probably black's king is weaker. Okay. Because right, you've got like this. I mean, I know you said there's this pin, but imagine a world where you move. Now you have this. And the knight can move, and you'll you'll get a big attack. So, uh, white here is white is actually completely winning. Okay. And that's because white has a jump. White can get a jump on black. Now in the game, my opponent played king h1 because he actually agreed with you. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Which, for better or for worse, in this particular case, the two of you agreeing like king h1, it's a little slow. So in terms of being directly hostile and aggressive, what is White's most hostile, aggressive move, most threatening move that White can play? Uh, well, bishop to h7. Aha, because you want to play here and here. But you want to play bishop takes h7, king takes h7, and then this. Yeah, that'd be cool. Something like this. So you win a pawn in this way, but losing the losing one of your most powerful attacking pieces uh is is a little bit you don't want that okay fair enough yeah so rather than doing that and i'll tell you why because this gives black time <laughs> and then after the queen is hit uh black will also go here okay yeah that makes sense and so now white's got like no activity because you're never moving your knight forward because i've activated my bishop i'm going to put my bishop here guard my pawn so bishop h7 is an idea, but okay, I mean, same line of thought. Oh, then like queen to h5? Yes. Yes, exactly. Because you're threatening, you're threatening mate, so they have to respond. Or if not exactly. mate, at least a nasty attack. Yes. So for example, if g6, I mean, you can already even consider sacrificing. Yeah. Because this, this, this. If the king goes to h8, for example, you have a very cool little trick. Uh, you can play like, for example, check. So if the king goes to g7, check, and now yeah. you're winning two pieces. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. You're winning two pawns and you're winning the bishop rather than the last example where you would have just been winning one. But yeah, of course, queen h5. Just in general, like queen h5. And then in the game, my opponent did this, knight c6, but now you still have queen h5. Right. Yeah. My opponent went here because that was very much their plan. So... <laughs> It's actually funny. This position is plus eight. Really? Despite being equal? Yeah. On material. That's funny. Yeah. This move is crushing. And this position is zero, zero, zero. Oh, wow. Yeah. So th this is when the computer afterward would, would not even show you a suggestion. It would just say, like, you know, you're an idiot. Yeah, you uninstall. Just... Yeah. I mean, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so queen e7. Now, I'm trying to stabilize here. I mean, the threat of, of knight g4 was to do what? It was to play check here and mate me yeah which you're probably not gonna it's easy enough to not get sucked into that i guess right because you just play you know queen e7 but now my opponent brings the next rook so they've basically done what they think is the best they've mobilized every single one of their pieces now bishop d7 uh and here a really cool move 
This should be one. Oh, okay. So what's the point? Um, I I would think that. Well, like to, just to be honest, I don't really recognize the point to begin with. But I would think that maybe they would try to get the queen on the same diagonal to threaten the same mate as earlier. Yeah, like queen to d three. Okay, so you absolutely understand the point. Okay, then fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, it's to it's to put the queen here. Now, you know, you, we've given black time, so black consolidated, which is kind of like one of the biggest lessons of this position is the fact that we didn't have enough time to play moves like king h one. Yeah. And then you know, black gets knight c6. This is defended. Black gets queen to good square. Black is fine. So time in this game was super important. Another idea is what my opponent does here, a3, to try to maybe go here and take this pawn yeah. since I can't, you know. However, bishop e8. White to play and win. I actually thought I was a genius here because I was like, I'm going to go here and trade this bishop. I'm so smart. <laughs> White to play and win. Yes, what is the most aggressive move that you can think of that also <laughs> happens to win? <laughs> well, I don't know. The most aggressive move I could think of is uh, queen to f8. But Okay. Uh, well, what's not, what's not allowing queen f8? Well, the, the queen would capture you, and then you, know, you would then ca get captured with the rook, and then they would capture your rook, so you lose a rook. So this is stopping you from doing that? Yeah. So you should play... What about um, what about rook takes e6? Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly right. Rook takes d6 and the whole house collapses. So the bishop on d7 uh, stops rook e6, which I, I didn't even see. When I prepared this game, period, <laughs> I like went through it and I was like, oh my god. Like, I can't believe I didn't, I, I had missed this during the game. It's just and I mean, so did my opponent. Like my opponent just blitzed out this move, and then we went like this, and the game proceeded. But even here, Queen D3 is a good move, forcing me to go King H7. Uh, and still, my opponent has some hope of attacking me, but the hope has to rest in the move Rook F4, which attacks the bishop, threatens to take it because you would get two pieces. Yeah. And then, for example, the bishop B6. This rook can get a friend. And where are they going? Uh, to f7? Yes. And uh, once you get to f7, you're also going to put something on f6. Because that can't take. Right, yeah. And then you're going to hit this together. So fighting for the open file with the pieces. Another idea, if you see this, what are you thinking? With this pawn kind of on g6, what, what are you thinking to do? Take it. <laughs> right away? Uh, no, not right away, because you'll just get taken. Um, well, I mean, I guess you would you would think about in some way. Mm -hmm. Pressuring it? Yeah, like like putting the knight on e5 at some point to put some more pressure on it, or you know, so, or maybe being able to put your uh, push your pawn to to h4. Yeah. Yep. H4, h5. Exactly. I mean, you want to go here, but this is covering. Yeah. But. You dislodge it and then get knight to e5 and then put the rook here. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, long story short, this game kind of trails off of the instructive path and becomes ridiculous, and I ended up making a comeback. But it's oh, crazy nice. because I was like, you know, it was plus 10 for white. So, and it's essentially, this is just about time. Like, you need to identify that you don't have time to go king h1 and make moves that just look like they're improving your position rather than actually creating any sort of threats. I, I uh, think that's really instructive, actually. Because oftentimes it does happen. Like, I get some kind of mm -hmm. advantage. Uh, and then I think, like... I, I think what's, like, a good move here instead of what would be, like, a good objective or, like, what would be a good plan? Like, how can I keep the... Like, from the first two lessons that we have, the advice of, like, always trying to find, uh, like, forcing moves and high-pressure mm -hmm. moves that force your opponent to respond have been... Uh, like, that's been really, really helpful. So I, I think an extra eye for this is going to work well for me in the future as well. Yeah, it's just basically not not getting lazy. But also, this is like, uh, and, and I don't, I, I didn't mean that in like a, you're lazy. Uh, <laughs> but I think we're all just a little bit like, I'm going to go here and then here and then here. Easy. Boom. Yeah. Uh, rather than, okay, I got to get out before my opponent consolidates everything. 
Uh, okay. Good start. Here's the next one. Uh, I'm going to invite you. Okay. I'm going to do five of these today. Already, between the smaller board and a little instruction, I feel like I'm I'm getting my mojo back. And well, we're gonna well, we're gonna play viewers as well. So oh, this okay. Is, <laughs> this is the position. Um, and you have white. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna go here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have white. So create an attack. Okay. Uh, queen to e4. Okay. Good start. Forcing me to do something. Yeah. So the thing about attacking chess is that, and, and again, in, in these games, there's a balance. Like, do, is it your pawns? Is it your pieces you're going to attack with? Um, when you play attacking chess, it's not. A, it doesn't always have to end in mate. It can end with, you know, me weakening my structure. Uh, and you can maximize how good your position is by making me make moves like this. So queen e4 is good. Uh, f4, g4 are all pretty good options here. Okay. Knight f4 is a good option. That's queen what I, is a good option. Yeah, knight f4 is what I was thinking of. Yeah. Knight f4 looks very, very natural because you have pressure here, pressure here. Um, okay, what if I play... Bishop d7. I just want to get developed. Mm, I still might consider, like, uh, knight takes g6. Okay. Calculate that. Like, uh, explain why. <laughs> well, no, I mean, just, well, tell me what's going to happen. That's okay. All. Well, then, you know, I'll take, and uh, then they'll take with the pawn, or black will take with the pawn. Mm -hmm. I'll take the pawn with the queen. Check. Mm -hmm. um, it might lead to... Queen to g7 as the protection. Yep. I mean, I guess it, it almost certainly would. Um, and then I guess that's where it gets a little, like, it fizzles a little. Because I don't really want to trade queens having the mm -hmm. the attacking advantage. So, I don't know. I would probably just play maybe, like, queen to h5 is what I'm visualizing at least, but... Oh, you mean, yeah, and that, I was like, now? That oh, be, yeah, no. <laughs> that'd, that'd be really impressive. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, like, and basically, you would look at that and you'd go, eh, I don't really like that. So, Maybe it doesn't do enough, yeah. Which is actually a concept I get asked a lot, like, when do you sacrifice versus when do you not? I mean, this is a perfect example of you don't have a follow-up. Uh, you know what I like? I was. What about uh, knight to h5? So, knight to h5 works if they take you. Yeah, it's more of a like a twelve hundred trap or something. <laughs> I, well, yeah. Uh, I mean, knight h five. The thing is, you got to ask like again, what's next? So okay, what it it's there, but yeah, I but mean, I, I, you would maybe I guess try to create an outpost at f six, but even that doesn't really accomplish much beyond just giving a, a check, I suppose. Yeah, like you go. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh, you know, here, here, and put my knight here. Yeah, but the second you go here, I can take your knight now because there's no. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's no. I mean, it, what's funny is that moving here, the computer wants to completely throw away the attack and just take the take, pawn. Yeah, take the hanging pawn and b seven. Exactly, which is which is again a balance that you strike in a position where you're creating threats. You got to also realize that sometimes you can't just get tunnel vision. Like a, it's a pawn, and it could be a second pawn. And you're just up two pawns, and yeah. that's good. Uh, Rook e3 is another good option. Always a good option. And the point is that, you know, you rook lift. Yeah. And you start bringing this. So if black starts to fight back, like with f5, the position can fall apart really quickly. Because now both of these things don't have a guard. Uh, you can take, but you can also just, like, slide forward. And who's guarding this? Like, let's say king h7, for example. This is now the instructive moment I wanted to show. I basically like prepared. Yeah, like rook g3 looks good. Yeah. But now we're going to start incorporating the balance of pieces and pawns. So a pawn move here, like, will kill black's defenses. G4? Yeah. And you say, well, so what? They're not going to take me. Yeah, but what are they going to play? <laughs> what are they going to play? Yeah. Actually... Let me ask that to you. What is the what do you think the best move here for black is? Just you're being attacked. What should you do? 
Um, I just flipped the board for a second here. Sure, sure. If possible, you like you want to create a threat that they have to respond to, and instead of dealing with the situation on their terms as they presented it, I guess so. Um, best move for black. So that's one way to combat an attack, but the second attack, uh, the, the second attack, the second way to, to combat it is uh, trade your opponent's most powerful pieces. Oh, so you, maybe you would play queen to f6 then. Queen f6, exactly. Like this move is the first one that I'm drawn to. Of course, like I keep saying, there there are pawns over there that we can take, but uh, and we will actually. I would be I wouldn't be surprised if. Uh, well, yeah, or or for example, something like this, which would lead to a transformation of the position where we're no longer attacking but we have activity and we're yeah. up a pawn yeah we are up a pawn it's just really hard to tell because this is four and that's three so we have the double pawn but we're we're up we're pressuring this we can go check in the future and take everybody and it's like pieces throwing in the pawn to you know dislodge things at a, at a good moment and if you can simplify from being attacking to up two pawns then you should it's probably fine yeah yeah exactly <laughs> like uh but again it, it's 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 thinking like okay in the game my opponent played queen f6 and i just took because i was like okay great and then they yeah. went here and i took that too so <laughs> uh it was a very weird game but again it, it's it's the opposite side castling and yeah it's a combination notice how like i didn't go back to b3 i went back to d3 because i wanted to line up to the king yeah and then the plan was like this, push the pawns, bring the knight, rook lift at a good moment, all these kinds of things. A lot easier when it's when it's opposite sides. Um, okay, next one. I'm gonna speed run these and then we can... Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Play some... I like hand and brain. Unless you, you, you had some other ideas. I, I think that's good. Uh, it, it's high pressure for me, which I think I play up to that level. So we're I gonna hope. jump. I, I, well, we will see. We will see. I think last time we had a we had a good time. Yeah, I thought so too. So this is the position. Um, I guess you. Wait a second. If I I'm trying to find a way, like you have the moves on the screen, and I'm just trying to find a way if I can like hide them. Oh, I'm not looking. I, I, I see them, and I know I could read them, but it would take too much mental effort. Yeah, I'm just like full training experience. Like normally, you can hide it, but I, I can't. So I just have to rely on. Please don't. <laughs> so knight b5, okay. queen c8. How does white create an attack here? Okay. It's another game played. One of the few games in the past two weeks that I've won. A much more complicated position, for sure. More closed. Yeah, more nobody's closed. lost any material, either. Yeah, it's, it's astonishing, considering I'm playing, but... Um, I mean, I, w one of the things I guess I would look for is... Like, queen to h3, with the, with the hope in the future to find a way to... I mean, obviously, they're they're not going to just let you mate in all likelihood, but to try to find a way to pressure the knight out of there? Mm-hmm. Queen h3 is a... Yeah, queen h3 is a great move. Uh, I see some questions about, like, knight takes knight, uh, and then trying to take on f6. But the thing is, at the end of all that, you've given away two pieces. Like, you don't have enough. You need to be absolutely ready to create a final strike before you chop off all the pieces. Because now your rook's hanging, and you can get one move to threaten mate. And then I go here, and you go, damn. <laughs> he saw it. Yeah. Ah, oh, all right, well, I got to move my rook now, and now black is just much better, because black is two pawns up. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, as the two bishops. I don't know why I said two pawns up. Yeah. Uh, basically, two pawns up. Computer is apparently saying that c4 wins for black and is minus 2.5. So, um, why is that? Uh, it's because... Your pawns fall apart. Oh, yeah. But, okay. I mean, uh, you're right, though. Queen h3. Great move. Okay. So you transfer the queen to h3, uh, have pressure on h7. Opponent goes g6, blocking your bishop. 
you see G6. What is the most natural continuation to this move? I don't know. Well, what strikes your fancy? What looks... That's uh, the whole point. Well, I mean... G4? Yeah, G4. Okay, that's great. Like, to me, the first most logical move in the game when I was playing was G4. Of course. G4, G5. Uh, I think G4 is bad because... Yeah, exactly. Like, if, if you even... I mean, computer's funny. Computer wants a move on the other side of the board. It's basically just not afraid. It's Probably not a bad afraid. sign. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it this? Yeah, it's basically the fact that the knight can just stand in the way of the queen. Like, and okay, yeah. you can play this, which threatens mate, actually. That's mate, because of your bishop. But It's interesting. Black just plays here, and your bishop's out of the game. Of course, it's still a very complicated position. At my level, I, that would be a win, yeah. No, I think, I, like, I'm, <laughs> exactly. When, when I say g4, g5 is not supported by the computer, I don't care. Like, that's a great, it's great that that comes naturally to you. Um, people were also during the game saying, well, g6 weakens this, so you should go here. And mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I should have. I didn't, during the game, I didn't just want to camp my queen there because I just thought black would be in time somehow. But queen h6 is actually a really good move. Yeah, uh, I was I would I was worried about this for example. And then just here. Mm, okay, yeah. But apparently again according to machine I can just shred it all open and even sacrifice my queen. Well, really the computer likes it. Yeah, computer thinks this is winning for white, which again in a blitz game is not practical. I mean you 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 just see that you're going to, you know, you you see rook e8, bishop f8. They're just going to kick my queen out. And if you don't see f5, you literally have no advantage. Computer's two moves here are f5 and queen back. Right, yeah. Or, you know, or here, here, and then queen back. So, but I like g4. Very good. Uh, another idea. Remember the rook lift? Okay, yeah, yeah. So I played rook f3 with the intention to, yeah, maybe play g4 and maybe play rook g3 just to hit this. Because at some point, you will have sacrifices. And that's the that's the whole point of the rook lift is like you're at some point you're gonna sacrifice one or two pieces in order to break up the king side and then having the rook there can lead to like a a checkmate basically. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Um, because you you need more firepower is essentially the thing, and the rook isn't doing anything on f one. And by having it on g3 hitting g6, you have a new piece. You just have a... The thing is, on, on f1, you're looking at, can I break through here with my pawn? Yeah. That's what my rook is supporting. That's why g4 is so good, because you have g5 and f5 as well. Um, so you, you just transfer the rook over. Now, the opponent goes d4, and we're not interested in yeah, we don't losing care. our... Right? Yeah. So we leave this. All right, so yeah, uh, we do care, I guess. <laughs> Uh, if, if yeah, well, I mean, if you if you took you'd you'd go down the rook, which yeah. is unpleasant, but it's it's actually not even like horrible. But yeah, of course, just rook g three, knight e five, f e five, and knight comes to e four. Okay, is this a good trade? And if not, then what's the alternative? Yeah, um, I. So my initial hunch is, as someone who's uh, taken tests, is that as soon as you say, if not, what's the alternative? Mm -hmm. um, that I, I'm thinking that the answer is not. But my initial hunch is that it's actually, I mean, I, I guess it's kind of not a great trade for the obvious reason of, of being a bishop for a knight. But then I do also kind of feel like the white pieces are, are kind of closed in on the black king side. But maybe having this bishop available like maybe maybe the fact that the pawns are placed on the white squares is actually good because it means this bishop can can sacrifice for them for an attack so i i mean if there's a different way to get that knight out of there cuz uh right now the bishop is essentially doing nothing um then it might be worth it but otherwise i don't know i kind of i would probably take honestly yeah, I, I, in the in the game I took. Now, don't worry, I'm not trying to set you traps. I honestly just, no, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just uh, you only have one other move if it's not take. It's here. You can't go here because you get forked. 
Mm. Right, so rook f3, knight, and you might think, oh, they're going to just get this if I go here, but no, no, they're, you know, that's why you have to go rook g4, uh, which is funny. At first, the, the, the computer's just like, of course, take, and it's not even close. But when I let it think for a little bit while you were explaining your thought process, it actually saw them evenly. It likes rook g4 and also likes uh, not, and also likes taking right away. I took right away. My logic was that my bishop has kind of served its duty yeah. to my to my position. Uh, and the bishop, as you said, is not going to really have a role here because in reality, we're going for h7. And the bishop is never going to defend h7 because the, the only way that can happen is if this goes here and that's even weaker now. So... We're really happy. Plus, actually, long term. Yeah, I, I have, now that I like the visualization, I didn't really see before. But now I'm also like, I feel like white has a lot of pressure that they can put on by moving the queen up on the, the h file. Yep. Th you know, threatening rook to, to h3. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Queen h6 and rook h3. It's like, how do you stop that? Now, I thought I was just completely winning here. Uh, so I played queen h6. Yeah. My logic was, I'm going to go here. Um, and opponent in this position played a6 attacking okay. attacking my knight and you said uh, h3 well what's funny is that that would have made a lot of sense oh no <laughs> it, it's it's actually it's it's the best move uh but i was trying to be uber fancy here oh okay and i i, I thought i was really clever because i was just going to you know equal danger my opponent and hit the bishop So the point is that if take, take, you just can't stop this at all. Yeah, because the only thing that can stop it right now is like G5, right? Exactly. Yeah, it was G5. And I, ha I had options. I could have played, um, I could have played knight D6. I could have played rook H3. Um, please, if anyone is ever considering playing knight A3, it's time to pick up checkers. Um, <laughs> I mean, you gotta, like, you gotta go and, and get this trade because you remove another defender. And you're attacking so um but I, I i again the concept of a danger level right which i was i made a video about this on youtube and the top comment there well i pinned it was uh accusing me of plagiarism because they're oh, saying no. i didn't invent this concept so therefore i shouldn't have made a video about it and i was like yeah so <laughs> doesn't this doesn't this kind of suck for you now though? like what if they just go to f f5 right so if they go to f5 what do you do doesn't well, suck. that's a good point. You got to go to you just go to e, e4. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So th th this was my logic in the game. I was like, if if d3, you know, bishop f5, e4, and I win, and I'm right. Like this this whole thing was correct. And if they take my knight, I take the bishop, and we win. They they like this is what I was thinking. They just can't stop my attack. Yeah. Like, there's nothing that they can do. Um. But what's funny is that there's a constant defensive resource in this position. Uh, and it's, it's, this is really interesting. So D E four, right. And if the plan is this and this, yeah. How does black defend black can defend, which I completely didn't see in the game. So it's, it's black to move here. Yeah. And you, you just got to make sure that you meet this move with the defense. Yeah. Um, you could flip it too, by the way. Well, yeah, yeah I was going to say, that's what I think is, uh, it would be moving to f6 yeah and then pushing the rook up yeah yeah because okay people saying king h8 but you literally walk into your own death i mean i <laughs> i don't know why we're saying king h8 <laughs> you got yeah you got to fight back a little bit and sometimes when you're under attack on the king side like this they can move a pawn up and that changes everything because then they can defend yeah which is interesting because look at this if i start with the mate threat look at that that's my real threat right now because they don't have the time to do yeah. this. And if g5, now I take. The bishop's gone. Mate is unstoppable. So I thought I was like big brain. Uh, it turns out I'm, I'm medium brain because when I play d3, black now apparently can play f6. Just giving this away, but preparing rook f7. But my opponent was so busy reacting to this that... The game did end with e4, oh, and e5, okay. e5, and opponent just resigned because, like, what are you going to do? I mean, 
the only way you 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 survive rook h3 now by the way you see the difference with f6 i have a pawn here so now i'm just gonna yeah okay it's it's, it's you're done. threatening mate again there yeah and now oh, yeah no, that makes sense yeah they came over the rook to to f7 anymore right I mean, my, my, my casualty in all of this was, was my bishop and my rook. I, I won this game with two peace odds. It's very impressive. Uh, but no, I mean, the, the most, you know, instructive moment here, it's a combination between peace and pawn play. And I said, you know, what do you, what do, you do? You said slide the queen over. I like that you said g4. So now you'll be constantly on the lookout for g4, f5, g5, planting the queen, and then the rook lift. And it was just a combination of all of these ideas, ultimately. And you shouldn't be worried about moves like pawn takes, even though they block your own bishop, as long as they can remove the knight from the defense. Okay. And if this, just bonus, pop quiz. Okay. If they do knight to h5. You just, I don't know why I was overthinking. You just take the knight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pinned. Benefit of having the rook there. Benefit yeah, yeah. of having the rook there is, uh, is, is this. So you have uh, queen h5. What makes this position so powerful? So for example, if like knight d7 attacking this, what makes this position so powerful for white? Have, have you, have I ever said the, my like attacking rule of plus two? No. Okay. So again, it's this thing that I totally invented and has never been known to mankind before me. Of course. Um, yeah. It's your attack will be a lot more vicious if you have at least two more attacking pieces then they have defenders. Okay. In this case, you have how many attacking pieces? Three. Maybe four. They have no defenders. The pawns don't count. Yeah, I was like, it's kind of rude to the pawns, but... That's, I mean, listen, we're a uh, heightist. They need to be <laughs> taller. And then... Uh, so like, but, but the pawns are basically sitting ducks. Like we're just waiting to chip away at all the pawns, but no knights, no bishops. And we can just, there's all sorts of sacrifices looming. Plus, like I said, at the end of the day, if you want to take a pawn for your troubles, then you'll be happy. So E takes D4 and you're very, you're pleased. So uh, let's do one more. Okay. Back this up to what we'll fill. 10, let me invite you. Okay, so you probably have it around like here. Yeah. Perfect, okay. Uh, you have it from Black's perspective? If you uh, I'll flip it. it, yeah. Okay. Also, I don't know why my name has been in lowercase. I don't know what's going on on chess.com, but they, they nerfed my name. I'm very sorry about that. Well, you know, maybe they, they heard what you said about the pawns, and then they said, let's see how he likes it, uh, if all the letters are are short. I think I've just been making fun of the guy who runs the social media account. No. <laughs> so they, 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 got, they, they got mad. Um, all right. You're playing with the black pieces here. Yeah. How do you begin some sort of attack Feel like the White King? Attacking, oh, on the on the White King? I was The first thing I was going to say is that I feel like the, the King side kind of... Uh, it, it seems kind of impregnable. I, I I like the look of like the the B and C pawns more, but I'm I'm open to your your expertise. Oh no no we are we're opposite side castling. So my rule for you is nine games out of ten where you've castled on the opposite side of your opponent, uh, you should uh, start some sort of attack. Okay. So in that case, um feel like we want our bishop to get access to the diagonal before their bishop gets access to it. Okay. Which would require moving the knight. I don't yeah, know. Lo long term, where should it go? Uh, like g4. <laughs> I think if right. we're doing an attack on the king side, g4, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, G4? well, in that case, they, I mean, the, the easiest way to get the knight to g4 is probably pawn to e5 first. Oh, you want to open the position. Yeah. But I you guess I, now that I think about it, that kind of sucks a little bit as well because they can move their rook over to, to d1, and in one move, we're kind of placed on the back foot. Ah, that is exactly why if you want to start an attack, you should not open the center with trades. Because also the queen now patrols. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. The rook, the rook comes in. Yeah, so you're gonna have to. It's gonna have to maneuver. So what's 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 the move then? 
If we want to get the knight to g4. Mm -hmm. Certainly a trip. Um, well, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be like to g4. I just mean to the king side. Well, you would do it to e7 then. Yeah, knight e7 is a central idea to this position. Okay. Like, like this will happen. It, it's not what I played right now, but I, I played it shortly. But I, I love the fact that in all this, you said we have to win the fight for the diagonal. I mean, my God, what a cultured man. <laughs> we have to at, at one point, I knew what I was talking about in this game. Oh, my God. He said that we got to win the You were the first 15, 1600 in the history of mankind to say that. I, I've... Yeah, that's a really I, nice move. Trust me when I say, if you look at some of my recent games, I'm the first uh, 15 or 1600 to make a lot of moves that I've made I, recently. <laughs> listen, we're not going to look at those games. We're going to look at, you know, when you, you said knight to e7. Okay, but I want you to go caveman mode first. Okay. So when I say caveman mode, that what means is, yeah. pawn storm. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so just h5? Yes. Okay. Let them know you're here. Because now their knight can't really ever go to attack you anymore. Sorry. GM arrow drawer. Because the H4 is coming. And you might play this. You might not. You, you, you know, if you, if you play it, uh, like knight takes, you might not sacrifice. You just open your rook. It's a lot easier to lose your pawns on opposite side castling. Yeah. Because you just put your rooks. So opponent goes H4. Which makes what weaker? Um, yeah, I don't know. So those two squares. Okay. All right. So like G four has a little bit of a target, and then this has a little bit of a, of you know the pawn has two guards. Okay. Yeah. Now the pawn's moved up. Uh, Rook G eight. Nothing unnatural, right? Rook d1. All right, your plan. Knight e7. Knight e7. And opponent goes c4. So the idea of c4 is to do what? Um. Well, if they play c5, if we take with the b-pawn, I mean, obviously there's a threat on the queen, but if we take with the b-pawn, it totally opens up our where our king yeah. is. Yeah, and for that reason, I was like, nah, I'm going to play c5. You're not going to do this to me. I call the shots around here. Uh, but if we want to start an attack, we have to keep the position closed. Yeah. And if I had just kept up with my plan here with knight f5, now you see I have a sacrifice looming. Because I'm going to get the, you know, the queen and the rook there together. And the bishop from a distance pressuring. So imagine a position where white is, you know, just I'll, I'll do an arrow, I'll draw nothing. Like, for example, something like this. Yeah, that looks this pretty is, good. It's over. Game is over because mm -hmm. this and this. Just whole thing collapses. Sacrifice at the right moment. Two, you know, two pieces on the G file. Uh, and if C5, I, I mean, I can take it. I can also just not take it. <laughs> like, that's the thing that I completely didn't, like, completely underestimate it. I can, I can run my queen into the same diagonal. Because my opponent doesn't have a knight move that defends the bishop. If, yeah. if they go here, I just take and I win. Right? So, queen takes and the game is over. So, with that in mind, I played c5 because I don't follow my own rules. <laughs> and then after this, 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 this. See, this is the issue. I kind of let my opponent simplify. But queen c2... And now knight f5. So what's the threat of knight f5? Uh, you, they can't capture on g3 if you take it. Perfect. Yes. I want to go here. It's also not easy to defend this. For example, if king h2, you have, you know, maybe bringing the rook over. You also have this to go here. Yeah, no, that looks pretty good to me. Knight g4, rook g8, maybe pushing the pawns in the center. Uh, again, computer's trying to claim that white is fine here, but playing this practically just looks like a nightmare. Uh, and while my opponent just immediately... Oh, uh, yeah, it's not so good. So, <laughs> blunder. Uh, I went back here, here, and I, I just went back because I wasn't worried about this, and now this is on the way. 
So rookie two, rookie eight. Finish the job. Okay. Um, bishop takes f3, knight to d4. Okay, then I, I'll play rook e3. Hold on. Can, can we play it out? Like, um, I feel... Or like, I, I I can't visualize it right now. So I, I was going to do like that. Mm -hmm. You would reply like that? That, that, okay. And actually, I feel like that kind of is not that good. I feel like that kind of sucks. Well, what's your most forcing move? You said bishop takes f3. Do you have anything else? I think, are your arrows not popping up for me? I think that might be the case, yeah. <laughs> do you see this? I do. I see yours, yeah. Uh, you draw one. Uh, what if we did like that? Oh. You see it? I see. Yes, now I see it. All right, well, there you go. Oh, what? If, okay, instead, what if you just played knight to d4? You Yes, you also have knight to d4, but you also have... Something even better. This. It's forcing, but but it seems bad. <laughs> oh, no, no, okay, now, because then they take, you take, uh -huh. and then you fork them there. Yeah, and this end game is winning for you because it's winning for you. <laughs> like yeah. you have yeah, you have the extra you have the extra pawn and it you you'll win it. But you also have the very cool move knight takes h4 check. Oh yeah, that's good too. So, Probably better actually. <laughs> yeah, th this one is actually technically better because knight bishop and uh, pawn for the rook is actually knight bishop and two pawns for the rook just win. So, and this is, this is, this is just winning. Um, then Rook takes G2. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, th this game again is like a, it seems like Black didn't do anything special. In fact, apparently this move C5, you know, like wasn't even good. Like Black should just continue with the plan. Like Knight takes G3, getting the, the, the queen and the Rook. And one more thing I wanted to show you after C4. Yeah. Uh, computer was suggesting to just sack the Rook, which is so funny. That's like the mathematically strongest move. Um, yes. And the point is that after F takes G3, Queen takes G3, despite right. being a full rook down, there's nothing white can do. Like the plan for black, first of all, you're threatening this. And second of all, you're threatening this. And black, like black's attack is just too fast, even though you're a full rook down. So, for instance, rook, uh, rook d3 actually loses uh, because you can take and take. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you also just go, like, rook g8 here and here. It's insane. Like, full rook down, but black has full compensation. It's, like, insane. <laughs> like, uh, but who's going to play rook takes g3 ever? So... I would be suspicious. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're playing a, a game and someone does that against you, sus, to say the least. <laughs> uh, and that, that, that's, that, I mean, that's putting it nicely. Uh, but I mean, again, the queen's not in the game. You know, the queen went out to a4 to hit a7. And, uh, okay, it's, it, it's been completely neutralized. But black, meanwhile, is transferring the knight over and playing here with a combination of pawn, weakening the structure with the pawn, and then there you go. So trying to create some some attacking possibilities. Uh, I that that actually was about like perfectly paced. I was hoping it would be like 40 minutes and ended up being like 45. Uh, I have one more. Yeah, let's do it. If you want to. I, I, was, I wasn't going to do this one. I was I was debating. This is from an over the board game that I played. So this is from a few years back. And I have the black pieces here against a 2700 GM. Did you, so you had to manually add this game into chess.com? Is that the... I, I did. I did. Yeah, just for this lesson. Did you? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's, I mean, thank I you. Like, I'm flattered. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it says Mr. Gotham. So you can look at it from Black's perspective. Okay. Uh, this was November 2016. I think it was the seventh round. And I think I was... Uh, in Dallas, Texas. And I was playing Grandmaster Andres Tukopin. So uh, he, uh, the opening not insanely important, but you'll notice actually we have the same exact pawn structure as the last game. Yeah. So you're yeah. probably gonna castle queenside. <laughs> I think it's fair to say. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or not castle at all. 
Okay. And so now, you know, I see as I start doing some things with my pawns here. I got the queen b4. Someone pointed out that was that was an interesting month. Yeah, actually, that was an interesting month. Um, okay. So right now, opponent goes g4, trying to break up my structure and go bishop g2. What's worth more than a pawn? Everything else. That is a that that's right. I would hate teaching you kid version. <laughs> um in this position, how do we create a threat worth more than a pawn? Um B4? Nice. Yes. Pawn storm. Beautiful. 92. All right. Now. Uh this one's this one's a little bit harder, but I I I'm I'm going to give this one to you. C5. Okay. Why? Because if G takes F5, what is the best move for black here? Because you just opened this, and this is defending it. So what do you want to play here? Given you just push your C pawn. That's C4? kind of the hint. Yes. Yeah. And you see what you're doing. You're like, this is really good for black. Hmm. And now black has to go here. And you know what the coolest thing about this move is? The queen now sees the F pawn. So white has to keep the knight guarded and relinquish defense of this. So queen f5 and now this. Yeah. This was back when I had a big brain. <laughs> this was my peak year of chess. C4 was my idea. And uh, my opponent played knight to f4. Okay. Now, again, in this position, I can play c4. And I did because that was my idea. Opponent goes here. And I, I guess I, I will just say when, when the queen moves here, what's the threat? It's actually, it has nothing to do with the queen. White is threatening something else. Bishop takes c4? Yeah, so how do you defend that? And add more pieces. Rook to c8? Rook to c8 is good. There's one more way. <clears throat> and add more pieces. To the party. Knight to, to b6? Beautiful. Knight b6. Imagine if this knight was not here and we would get to go here. Oh, that'd be so nice. <laughs> like, it feels good, no? At some point, you're like, oh, I'm going to go here and then here and then I'm going to mate. And it's going to feel so good. You know, like, knight b6. So opponent goes rook g1, unpinning. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's what that, that's all about. Now, this is... Th this game is kind of like... It, it's, it's why I didn't... Uh, I, I was, like, hesitant about showing it. Because... The next few moves are a little bit wonky, but they're the best. Is why I'm like kind of proud of this game. So now you go bishop e4, which when I play it, it it, it begins to make sense. What, what what is the idea of bishop to e4? Threatening c2. Yeah, literally. By the way, like even though it's protected, you're threatening to sacrifice and just kill, like b3, c3, uh, everything. So opponent went back, and I think just literally missed how strong this sacrifice is. Mm. And um, what's interesting is that queen takes a2 immediately allows rook b1. So I played the in-between check, queen a4. Oh, and yeah, can, that is can't interesting. Because right? this. <laughs> so opponent has to go here. If b3 take check, you're dead. Absolutely dead. Rook is coming, just like you said earlier. Take, rook is coming. So king c1. And now, rather than go here, because it gives my opponent like time to potentially maybe get some pieces over here, how do we shred it all open? Using your uh, well, it's not going to be pieces because only the queen is out there. So yeah, well, yeah, I would think uh, c three. Yeah, and it's it's really hard to identify which of these two pawns because they actually. Right, like I, you were probably. Con Why did you decide on this? Yeah, one? well, I, I mean, in my head, I kind of played through, uh, I guess B three, and I was like, well, if if you do B three, don't they just respond A three, and then you're kind of like you're more locked in there than than you were before. Yeah, so B three, what's fine? Yeah, <laughs> cold blooded bastard wants to just take this pawn. Um, A three, I think maybe you can sacrifice. Okay. Yeah. And. In, in a game, you know, you go, oh, here, here, boom, I'm so smart. But wait a second. They can just take. And you go, oh, somehow they're covering everything. Now, yeah. granted, this was a 90-minute game, so I had some time to kind of work it out. So I played C3, and I was really proud of myself. I was like, he's going to take. Uh, I'm going to take. I'm going to put my rook here. 
with my bishop. Take. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna get my I am title. I'm gonna yeah, get you're my gonna I am grandmaster. Yes. This game, had I won it, would have got. I, I didn't win it. Spoiler, but oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would have. Uh, it would have clinched me my I am title back oh. in the day. Uh, but opponent went here. So what's the threat? The rook on h8. And what else? Uh, well, then the rook on a a8 as well. No, not the rook on a8. It's protected. It is. Yeah. No, there's another threat to this move besides this. Like, white has a move here. Like, rook g8 <clears> loses <throat> the game. Look oh, for bishop, bishop to b5? Yeah, look how disgusting this is, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. What is the only move in black's position that prevents both of those things? From your rook from getting taken... And the fork. Uh, C takes B2. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You actually can do that as well. Okay, forget the C pawn can take anything. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're right. I, I, honestly, so, uh, hand to God, I forgot that that could happen. Besides that. I, it, it sucks really bad, but you get queenside castle. It doesn't suck really bad. It's the top engine move, and it's the only winning move in the game. <laughs> and I, you know what's the craziest thing? So first of all, C takes B2 is is okay, but the problem is that like white literally just takes, and it looks like you have an attack, but you have no attack somehow. Yeah. You're just too slow in this version, because this is not what you wanted, and now this is still hanging. So, But that's why I said, and by the way, you can also you know even take a knight, but it makes no difference because you, you can't defend yourself. Um, and you, you don't want to castle kingside because you literally hang maiden two. Oops. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, it's a pawn <laughs> takes pawn mate. And uh, no, long castles is the only move. And in the game, I played queen takes a2, and it, it, we, then I'll show you what happened. But sometimes in, in, in attacking positions, you have to be creative. And th that that's like the... The, the craziest thing here is that all of this is guarded. I'll tell you why I didn't play this. I thought this was too slow, and I thought my opponent would go here. And it, like, check this out. I can go c2. Okay. Rook d2. Like, take, take. This is what I saw. And I was like, where's my attack? I thought I was attacking. But... I have, like, nothing here. I mean, yeah. of course, you know, a a engine gives whatever. But I was, like, calculating all these lines. And I realized that if I if I just take on A2 and I get checked, I move my king. I By the way, if I move the other way, it's mate. Yeah. So I lose a rook. And then we just repeated moves here. So oh, I thought so after... Bit, it, it, yeah, it's, it's going to be a draw. I calculated this far in my head. This is what I saw. I was like, I just I'm winning. I'm so smart. Look at me. I'm winning. I'm threatening mate. The queen's hanging. But what did I miss? From this position? Yes. White to move and save the game. And save the game. Knight takes e6? Yes. Yes. Had some people in chat reading r reading the computer suggestions. <laughs> Y'all saw it in two seconds, really? I didn't see it, like, for 15 minutes of thought? Knight e6. And here's the funny thing. So I'm down a lot of material here. Yeah. Uh, how much? Seven points of material. If I take... Opponent goes check. I move my king. <laughs> And the opponent goes king c2 <laughs> and runs away. Game gets a runs, little weird, yeah. Yeah, a little bit weird. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm losing. I, I don't, I can't, you know. The po the problem is the queen and the king both get away. I had both of them hostage, and now they both get away. Uh, and if I take with the knight, uh, sorry, with, I take the knight with the queen. Uh, I'm this. What is yeah, this? Yeah, it's I, over. I mean, yes. And last but not least, the move that I played in the game, which was king b7. And, a and I just said, oh, look at me. I'm so smart. No checks now. But there is. There's this. Yeah. And if I take it, the opponent's not going to take back. 
they're going to run their king. And I'm still down a full rook. And there you go. Like, all this happens and the king just gets away. And I remember seeing this and realizing that I could draw this game. And I was like, oh, thank God. I mean, and, and the game just draws. It's like the weirdest, the weirdest repetition ever. <laughs> I mean, the knight cannot be taken. This king c2, king d3 idea is ridiculous. But it's a last resort. Sometimes when you're king, it's like a lot of... This is obviously like a, a, a much higher level game in terms of the attacking play because everything is is less caveman like you're, you're you're not just chugging it's like very controlled you know bishop goes out sacrifice the in between check the pawn breakthrough but then also this this counterplay idea you know not just sitting back and getting steamrolled but you know playing queen e5 and threatening this like i, I mean, you know, I, I right here, I just thought I was invincible. I was like, I'm, I'm going to win this. this. This guy's trash. Like, this is like, this guy's terrible. And then Queen E5 happened, and then I went, oh. Uh-oh. And that's where you sit there like this for 40 minutes trying to puzzle it out? Basically, yeah, that's what classical chess is like. You blunder an idea, and you sit there thinking all sorts of things. Why did I come to this tournament? Um, why am I playing chess? Why am I not focusing more on school? I should really get a girlfriend because it was 2016. So, um, <laughs> so there was no Lucy. And I was just thinking like all these, you know, existential thoughts. Um, and uh, my opponent, meanwhile, was just going like this. And, you know, I was telling him that I thought he could have played one of these positions for a win somewhere here. I don't remember. I think this was a draw, but I, I, I don't remember. Like maybe he had a moment here. He could have tried to play. Oh, here here he didn't have to take my rook he actually could have just played king c2 and then like this and this and even if i get this i'm just losing my position is really bad even though material is completely equal because i can't stop his attack and i remember sitting at the game going oh my god i'm actually going to lose this game and after the game, I asked him, I was like, why didn't you just play King C2 right away? And he's like, well, no, you know, I was just so happy not to lose this game because yeah. <laughs> I was sitting, you know, for so long. I thought I was just going to get killed. But, you know, and he's like, I saw the repetition and I just like said, screw it. And I drew the game. <laughs> yeah, um, he had the same moment. He's like, I got to get a girlfriend. Why am I not, you know, focusing on a more professional life? I, yeah, probably. <laughs> he's like, why am I losing to this, this dummy kid? This 20 year old goofball, you know? Uh, but yeah, I mean, this, this was kind of like the culmination. Um, so I think like for the last part, maybe we do a hand and brain. You have to go in 15 minutes. Is yeah, that the plan? 18 minutes or so. Okay. I can usually, I can push it a little bit without getting in trouble. We could play one 10 minute game hand and brain. Why not? Uh, should. Okay. I'll take a 10 minute challenge. Someone sent me a 10 minute challenge. You just have to follow me. So just click on my account. We're observing this game together. Give me, give me a sec. I'll figure it out here. Two observers. There we go. Follow is one of the not add friends. No, don't definitely don't do that. That follow. You could, you could do that too. So. There you go. I'm following you. Perfect. Okay, I will. Ex I'll play. Uh, I'm gonna play somebody I've never played. Oh, I mean, I gotta, I gotta play this guy. See who we're playing? Pogs Gore. Dude, it's perfect. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This person's only played one game ever. They're 1382, though. Yeah, but the account was made. All right. Let, we could do it. We're fine. All right. You tell me a piece, and I'll move oh, it. I would say Pawn is pretty good here. Forgot what what do you play? You've been playing uh I've been playing the the London actually. I've been but I can't get people to do the uh like they don't respond knight to f6. It's like a five percent of the time they respond knight f6. So I I play bishop. But knight f6, what are you you playing bishop g5? Is yeah. that the uh -huh. and then doing the raptor variation. But I only got like two chances to do it. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. it's I mean I, I need to some like psychology tricks. Like before the game, I gotta be like, "Hey, wow, knight to f six is like the best move you could ever play as black." <laughs> to in response to d four. All right. Well, tell me a tell me a piece. Oh, they did move. Yeah. Right. Um, pawn. Pogged gourd. 
I hope it's a... You bring a good community, so I don't think it's someone suspicious. Um, oh, no, I, I don't think they would they would stock fish you. Um, right. Pawn? Yeah, in general, there's this C5, C3 rule that I impose. If they play C5, you play C3. But oh, actually, okay. taking right away is a line, and it's very tricky for black. Um, the very early capture on C5 can actually win you like a lot of games. It's actually giving me a video idea. It's like a lot, you know, you're supposed to play C5 and a lot of people rush it. They don't play E6 first, which is completely okay, but... All right, Queen B6. You know, I thought it would be less stressful to be the uh, the brain, but it's really not. It's oh, it's all <laughs> stressful. It's all horrible. Um... I'm just wondering if it isn't worth just giving that up. Probably not. Let's say you probably move your queen. Yes. I'm going to play an endgame versus the uh, potential computer. <laughs> would you, this would be your move in this situation as well? Yeah, this is the best move in, the, in these positions. Okay, well, I mean, I don't know. Pawn would be, yeah. Right. So uh, th this position is considered slightly better for white because of the activity of the rook. Yeah. That we've now been granted. Yeah. We also have a threat, which is really funny. I'm not going to say anything, but... I, just... I, I like the 20 seconds spent on this move. Because it means that their time balance usage is scrambled. So they are not cheating. Hey, I yeah. In... I was going to say, don't make fun of the people. Like, I'll, I'm playing against 1382s. I'd be, I'd be, like, defecating right now. Okay. Bishop. I'm saying they. I'm, they, I'm saying yeah. they move the. I'm not saying we have to move I a bishop. I see what you're saying. <laughs> um. So in my head, I'm like, we made one good move. Time to get very passive. So <laughs> my move is knight. Yeah, probably just this. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, we have. Oh no, that was. I should have went to A3 and then to B5. That like totally escaped my mind for a second. I was just, I was always going to play Knight D2, but Knight A3, Knight B5 is actually really annoying for black. But I thought if you, if you move to A3 with your Knight, you're supposed to go to checkers. Oh, uh, no. You only go to checkers when I say so. Okay. <laughs> uh, Knight? Yeah. Yeah, knight f3 is nice and solid. And this is, I think, by the way, on the last move after bishop f5, we could have taken on c5, and it would have just been a, an extra pawn there. But now the bishop would take it, so now we have to come up with some other ideas. Bishop? Yeah. You thinking this? Yeah. Yeah, I would certainly hope so. It's 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 probably the most active move that you can play here. And then you you hope that they play a6, you go a4, and then when they do b5, you just you just scramble their brain. The, well, that's what you would no, a6 a6 is a, is totally the the best move here for black. A black should absolutely play a6. Um I mean, you've got to address our bishop here. Black is two moves away from getting castled, which... What? What a move. <laughs> Blocking the pin with the knight. Um... What? <laughs> that just happened? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Feel like you... You like the position here, for sure. So what I would do is probably castle, um, which doesn't accomplish as much as it probably should. Okay. I, you know, I, I'm trying to get more out of it than like. I mean, I'm not supposed to say the moves, so I'm I'm, I'm walking through my thought process regardless. Um, I'm thinking, like, what if you mm -hmm. did, like, knight to e5? Okay. Mm -hmm. But then if they, they're going to do knight takes e5. Yeah, either way, I don't think you get enough out of that. I don't know. I would say king. Okay. 
Not Castle. I mean, your other idea was also very respectable. I mean, I could have played Kingy too, I suppose. That's the but, chance favorite for sure. Yes. It doesn't matter when you play it. It could be, you know, <laughs> late end game. You play Kingy 2, it's a bon 48th move. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> The 48th move of a bond cloud. Um, I feel like bishop is your move here. Okay. I'm going on intuition only, but... Bishop. Not going to lie. I don't know what you want from me. Really? Because it's to me, it's so obvious. Uh-huh. It's this. It's correct, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, right. now, now you're playing a very me-type game. Because now I'm like, oh, now you, you move your knight. But I don't know if that's actually the play. Give me you one. You mean this? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. I would say the position is, is equal now. But you also have to anticipate the fact that your last few moves opened the B-file for black. Yeah. And in the future, they could have some pressure, but your bishop is going to be really annoying for the rook to ever get to b8. That's true. So. Yeah. And then you would do bishop? Yes, bishop. Let's also try to, like, do game flow. So we're down a minute. We want to catch up on time. We don't want to be down two minutes in a ten-minute game. Oh, is that a good strategy? <laughs> Generally. I think I finally yeah. figured out my problem. Yeah, I was going to, like, make a video about time management soon. Or if you're watching on YouTube in the future, hi, it already exists. But uh, I don't have one out yet. But, yeah, generally, like, in 90-minute games per player, I tell myself not to think longer than 10 minutes three times. Okay. So, F6. All right, so I'm going to bishop. bishop. Yeah. Yeah, let's, I guess, go back. Yep. Maybe this. Oh. All right, we're moving quick now. Let's do Rook. Okay. Mm Beautiful. A perfect, I think you really nailed that one. I, I, I like your plan, but I'm very, uh, I'm nervous. Nah. <laughs> Ah, yeah, 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 I can see why. <laughs> I'm nervous. I can see why you would be. I'm nervous. And and, and the problem is that I, I, I had to play the move on the board. I could have played something else. <laughs> but, but they were going to trap our bishop, and you didn't do anything about it. I'm more worried about, like, what, what if they just play bishop to d3? Uh, well, uh, no, they're not going to play that move because they don't see it. But um, <laughs> they, they just played h5. And I was like, you got to say pawn because you got to save the bishop. Otherwise, our bishop is going to get trapped. No, you could always, you send it down to uh, to c7. <laughs> yeah. No, the king. Oh, well, speaking of which. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a great spot, Bishop. Yeah, I think we have to. Yeah, Bishop to c7. Yeah, well, that's what, but it's not, I mean. Bishop? You don't like it. I I just realized there's th th there are bigger problems here. Um... Is that what you're thinking? That was what I was thinking. Yeah, it's not. It, this it's is, not. This is unrated, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's unrated, but it's okay. We can make a comeback. All right, now we gotta, we gotta, we gotta save some stuff here. Yeah. We don't want to lose a full rook. Pawn. Yeah, this is. So. All right, dude. Come on. Come on, dude. Don't don't think too long on this one, dude. <laughs> now we start playing for time. 
Yes. Standing order, pawns only for the rest of the game. Very confused. What is going on right now? Why, why is our opponent just not taking the free rook? Maybe he's like... Oh, he saw the IM tag. Maybe. Uh, king. Yeah, I would take with the king here. I like that. And now you can bond cloud next turn. Absolutely. And we, we need to give CPR to the king. I, I like that we've caught up on time. So we can totally... If we just stop like the... The shit chat and we just get down to business then all right we could win this <laughs> okay um knight knight sorry it's too late now though yeah um <laughs> are are you are what's what i told you it's the monitor levy it's the monitor all right we still aren't totally totally losing we <laughs> Okay, let's try to stabilize, please. Okay. Stabilize. Starting now. Stabilized. This is a move where you would want to move your bishop. Yes, bishop c3. Pog! Okay, we're back. Even we can't even use that anymore. <laughs> Correct, yes. Now we say Komodo hype. <laughs> Komodo hype, please. Speaking of Komodo... Um, DC four, DC five, maybe the That's H pawn is thinking, under yeah. attack. All right, we're we're up on time, so yeah, by five seconds, it's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Kom Komodo hype is a is a really funny one. I, I love. Isn't that pack chomp or is that not pack chomp? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> the heck is pack chomp? Um. Ooh. Okay. It's a tougher one for sure. Got to move quick though. Yeah, let's do knight again. Okay. <clears throat> oh, they're okay. moving quick now too. All right. Um, you're going to move a pawn. Uh, is that what you were thinking? I honestly just thought let's move fast and that gives you a lot of options. Right. Right. I respect it. I mean, I think H3 is good because now the opponent has difficulty moving on that side of the board. Okay. Rook. So here. Oh. I'm 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 hanging around, man. I'm not leaving. You know. I'm... <laughs> Bishop. I think pawn was better now that I look at it. Well, I don't know. It's been the, the defining characteristic of this game is I don't really know. <laughs> uh, Bishop? Yeah, I think we have to go here. All right, it's a three-minute game now. Hmm. We got we to gotta keep this pace up. I can. If you need me to just send them, I can send them. Bishop. All right. You can even hit me with pre-moves. Oh, Rook? Right here. Rook. Damn, that was a good move. I'm like trying to think if I want to. Oh, man. That was a really annoying move. I, I, I'm not going to trade because I think I want to preserve winning chances. Yeah, the more tools you have at your disposal, probably the better it is. King. Yeah. The strongest 1380 I've oh. ever played. Knight. Uh, rook. Uh huh. King. All right, Rook B2 check and Black wins. All right, Levy, take it away. <laughs> rook B2 and the game is over. Oh, we got a Bond Cloud on move 32. There you go. 32 move Bond Cloud opening. Knight. Pawn? Yeah, I'm thinking here, and it's a little hard for black to develop, but... King? Yeah, this game is going to be a whole lot of doing nothing, basically. 
Oh, but look at that. There you go. There you just bought 20 seconds. There you go. Do do night anyway. Mm. You wouldn't understand. It's 1500 level strats. Anytime you can put them in check when they're under 2 minutes, especially with a night. I'm going to I'm I'm going I'm going for glory. Okay, even better. Night. Yes. We're going for it. <laughs> We are not gonna. We're not gonna sit here and rest. Night. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna work, but damn it, I'm gonna try. <laughs> oh, um, uh, <laughs> pawn. Yeah, that's it. We, we're breaking out. It's game over. Here we go. Still uh, pawn. Uh huh. Still got a seven second advantage, king. Pressing the time advantage. Oh. Um, sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, hey, misclick. Yeah. Whoa. I actually was like fake dragging it. I didn't even mean to. <laughs> my bad. I like how the opponent is thinking. What is the opponent possibly thinking about? They're they're probably like tweeting right now. Like, I'm about to beat an internet. Uh, night. Yeah. Wish they could take their own e-pawn. Knight? Yeah. Look at mm. that. Come back, kids, right here. Mm. Doesn't look 30, that bad. 30 second lead. King. Uh huh. Question is where? Why are we moving this guy? I guess here. Knight. Yes. Knight. Yes. Maybe maybe draw offer. <laughs> maybe a draw offer now. Well, yeah. I mean, it's repetition. I didn't have a move there. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, it would be yeah. Draw. I mean, it's repetition. I mean, it's like two pawns each. It's end game. Oh, there you go. I don't know. I, I think they're messing with us. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so now what? Pawn? Yeah, I like that. I like that. I mean, I've seen better positions, but... Pawn. Okay. Knight? Yeah, I'm trying to, f <laughs> trying to figure that, that, that knight move out. Maybe this? I'm going to have to... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Knight? Yes. Pawn? I think we could do this. I think we could do this, man. It's pawn. They're, they're getting low. Uh, <laughs> uh, pawn, I suppose. And then king. Yes. And, you know, just kind of a standing order on King, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if they can mate with 15 seconds. I'm going to start pre-moving. Oh, God. Oh, they're, God. They're, they're going to get you. The, oh, they're, oh, my God. They're playing the best moves. Oh, my God. Even in a low time situation, they are playing <laughs> literally the best moves. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we just repeated. Hey, let's go. Oh, my goodness. Look at oh. that, we just repeated moves. This is like, it's your exact game with the Grandmaster. Like, they had the chance to, to take down a titled player, and then the attack just slipped away. I mean, chess is just one big draw, huh? It's a villain origin story. That was amazing. Yeah, um, it was not, my, not my finest game, for sure. Well, I played the move, so actually it was my fault. Well. Um, <laughs> so I had to... Yes uh, and no. Yeah, that was... That was an interesting game. That was uh, yeah. I I wasn't pretending when I said I've I've dropped uh, two hundred points or one hundred and fifty points recently. Like I just uh, uh, you know I I think it's a combination of new monitor, newborn infant. Sleep is at a premium. 
the, you know, I'm playing such high level chess, the, uh, the meal situation, the nutrition becomes very important, making sure you get a little cardio in the morning so that everything's like all the blood's moving through the system nicely. I think I'm just out of my routine right now. You, uh, you going for runs in the morning? Wow. No, not at all. But oh. I would love to, though. <laughs> oh. I love the idea of it. Oh, wow. Oh, you got me. Yeah, I was going to say that's really commendable because I don't uh, I, I, I keep wanting to do that. And I don't. That's the end of my sentence. I just don't. I, yeah, I yeah. want to. But oh, yeah, it's definitely a good idea. Uh, how much time you got left? You, you, I got zero, unfortunately, but uh, I'm, I'm always down for a lesson. Uh, and and uh, even non chess content as well. Like I don't know if if you follow uh, my own uh, work schedule, but we're we're doing way more streaming mm -hmm. lately, which is great because I got more freedom to do stuff that is not uh, just like playing the same three games over and over. Which I understand I'm preaching to the the choir on that one, but <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like to mix it up. So yeah, so let's uh, I don't know. Let me know what your schedule is like in the next uh, the next week or two, and we'll. We'll find something to to get it going. Okay, we can do it. I'll join for the. Uh, I did, did, I think I said this to my chat. I don't know if I if I said this to you, but every time I hear NLSS, don't just don't follow the thought up with what I think you're gonna say. I was gonna say it sounds like a ship. Okay, that's way better because most people say anal lingus, which is eating someone's butthole. I. Man, no! <laughs> and even if I thought that, I would never say that to you. That's much more wholesome than than what most people say to me. No, I just I think the S, you know, the NLSS. It's like a big, you know, ship. That's what I. <laughs> wow. Well, now I'm gonna have to tell the kids watching with their parents what. Oh, what, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, they use the medical term for it. I can't believe. No, I didn't. I I didn't think. No, I thought it was a big ship. So it'll be like a big ship of, you know, of, of homies just hanging out and playing games. But Yeah, pretty much. Kind of like that. But you don't well, want to was... know what happens in the in the bunks after. <laughs> that's where the that's where the other part anyway, I'm just gonna go. Um yeah, and thanks thanks for the lesson again, as always. I hope that you get something out of it as well. And and your viewers, uh I think they do. And okay. I, I just have a good time because I can mix it up for two hours on like just playing Blitz and losing. So I hear uh, I'll hit yeah. you up about other content. All right. Later.